Several weeks ago I did a video on the Christmas tree. There was an anomaly that arose. And I guess I'm not going to bother uploading that video anymore because I'm going to talk about it in this video instead. When I put the Christmas tree up, I used, I believe it was 12 strings of lights. So let me zoom into my calculator here, which is, oh no, it's unsupported, but guess what, it still does math just fine. Uh, 175 watts per string times, I want to say it was 12 strings. It was 2100 watts and divide by that 120. So we had a total of 17.5 amps. I don't have any 20 amp runs in the living room, so I had to split the connection between two different circuits. And I think I ended up having about 11, maybe 11.6, I think. Let's see, uh, 8, 10, 9, 7, 5. I think that would give us 11.6. Yeah, about 11.6 amps on one, and then um, 15.5. And then about 6 amps on the other. So, on the 11.6 amp circuit, I also had the pellet stove, which was uh, 1.5 about. And I had this computer that I'm using right now, which doesn't draw much power. And the television set, which doesn't draw a whole lot of power. And then a couple of lamps, all with CFLs. So that was maybe, maybe we'll say a half an amp for the lights. And that left us with uh, about two amps, um, no less than that, about an amp and a half. Not, not, not much power uh, for the TV, the computer, and the audio equipment. Now, I was getting away with it because I seldom have ever used all three at the same time. Um, if I had the television set on, I was watching television, there would be no reason to be playing music. You know, and if I was looking at the computer screen, I wouldn't be looking at the television, so... There was never a situation that would arise where I would use all three, so it was fine. So I had the 1.4 amps left, and, uh... I don't know how much power the TV draws, I guess not much, because... I would operate the television set with the pellet stove and the Christmas tree, all three of them together... Daily, for the entire month of December, no problem. I even on occasion would, would have the computer on too, and it was still fine. Uh, plenty of times I had just the Christmas tree and, and the music going, and it was fine. So then we get into January, uh, I would say maybe a week into January. The circuit breaker goes out. Okay? Didn't think much of it, because sometimes circuit breakers go out if you have a lot of stuff plugged in. So I reset it. Went out of the day, everything was copacetic. And a couple of days later, it happened again. And this time I says, oh, that's odd, you know, because it wasn't happening at all for a month plus, and all of a sudden it's happened twice in a week. Didn't think a whole lot of it still, but I was aware of it and, you know, keeping an eye on stuff. Then I noticed over the course of the next couple of days after that, um, as I was off from work for a little while, so I was using the Christmas tree during the day without the television set on and, uh, you know, or throughout the evening. I noticed when I would go to unplug the Christmas tree, the extension cord started to get warm. And then, uh, you know, not, not like concerningly warm. You know, sometimes cords get warm when there's a lot of amps going through it. But it was a 12, a 12 gauge cord and it never heated up at all when I first put it on. So that was a sign that something wasn't, wasn't right. And then uh, I, I, was, I had gone back to work. I was eating dinner one night and I had, was watching the television. I had the Christmas tree on and the pellet stove on and the breaker goes out again. And I was in the middle of eating so I didn't, I wanted to just get everything back on so the food wouldn't get cold. So in that moment, I took the, the cord and I split the power into three different circuits. So that instead of having 11 amps going in there, maybe there's five. You know, and, and out of the five going, or the six going in somewhere else. And I always meant to revisit it. 
put it back the way it was, plug it into the meter and see what it was because when I unplugged the extension cord that time on that particular day it was scalding hot. So something was, was definitely changed. So I, I don't know, I, I just never went back to it which was terrible. I, I get a zero for that one. I should have gone back to it when I was done with dinner and see why it was doing that because something was wrong and you, especially as a technician when you're looking at a technical problem you can't just correct the manifestation of the problem you have to correct the the problem itself the source why is it happening I fixed the manifestation of the problem by splitting it between three different circuits but that didn't solve the problem which ultimately was the fact that the voltage was too low so a couple of weeks go by the you know, maybe a week goes by and I take the Christmas tree down and I just I just never went back to it which is terrible but that's what happened and then uh, a week or so after that the electricity starts going crazy and and uh, the voltage goes nuts and ultimately the the neutral line outside was was having a problem so I uh, thinking about it after the the line uh, the line woman came out and fixed it I bet the reason why the Christmas tree was blowing up the, the fuse is because the power, the voltage was too low. Because if we take the, which is 1400 watts I think, if we take these 1400 watts, and this is an incandescent bulb so it's a power factor of 0.99 so we just divide it by um, the volts, the watts by the volts to get the amps, we get 11.6 amps. But if these 1400 watts, let's say it's only getting 108 volts, which is the lowest I saw when I was testing it with relatively limited things connected, it's 13 amps now. I mean, let's say, it, I mean, it could have gone lower than that. Let's say it went down to, to uh, 105 volts. You get 13 amps going through that cord instead of 11. Now, that's not really enough that I think it should have heated up that cord like that because a 12 gauge wire at 25 feet should be good for 20 amps so that that still is a little bit not explained but this makes perfect sense as to why the breaker was going out because now instead of drawing 11 amps we're drawing 13 and since it was on the edge of the limit of what's available now putting the pellet stove and the TV on would push it over to 15 and that's why it was going out so it makes sense and major shame on me for not checking it out because if I had put the meter on there that night I would have noticed it was wrong and what was going on and I could have got it fixed that day or the next day. Instead, it was operating like that for two or three weeks before it got so bad that I saw it surfaced elsewhere in the house, you know, in the bathroom and in the kitchen lighting. Um, it's scary to think that it was like that for several weeks. That That is potentially a very dangerous situation. So fortunately it turned out okay and I got it fixed before it totally spiraled out of control but it was a close call and uh, it could have been avoided by taking a couple extra minutes to check the problem properly which is what should always be done